Hey, it's Jen Gleason Blue of The Resilient Body, and I want to invite you into some exploration of your the relationship between your hip and your knee. Um, so why don't you bolster yourself up? You can use a block, a dome, whatever feels good. I'm going to use, you know, a rolled-up blanket. I'm going to use this sucker, and I'm also bolstering up my head and shoulders just because it feels fantastic. So why don't you bring a leg in? You're going to extend the other leg. So most of us spend a lot of time in a seated position, you know, and so we get a lot of tension here. This, this joint angle gets smaller. So probably just doing this immediately, ah, right? I've been traveling, uh, road tripping in the car a lot for the last few weeks. So in addition to any normal tension, regular day-to-day -day stuff I carry here, it's been super intense. I've had this cold, I've just overall not been feeling well. So any unwinding that I might have done on the trip, um, I have not done <laughs> as I went. So here I am home unwinding a bit. So ideally, when we walk, why don't you switch sides? When we walk, um, we are using the backs of our legs to propel us forward. And if you've been around a while, then maybe you know that, like your hamstrings and your glutes should engage, your, your leg can stay straight as it pushes you back, and you move forward. And your pelvis doesn't have to tuck and untuck a lot, right? We don't have to have a lot of wibble wobble. Um, so that's the ideal. Um, however, when we step, most of us get some knee bend, and we have one, one quadricep muscle, the rectus femoris, which crosses both the knee and the hip. So if it's tight, it can impact what's happening on both ends. So I'm gonna come back to the first side so that you can see this. So here, we kind of see the relationship between my pelvis my, you know, and, my, and my leg. So I'm kind of at this, at this angle here. Um, I'm going to drop my lower leg to the floor, and so, so here I am, I'm going to drop my lower leg to the floor, you can see immediately my thigh pops up, right? And you can play around with this on yourself, so you're really kind of anchoring here, and then I drop it, and it pops right up. So with every single step that I take, when, my, when I get any kind of knee bend, that's changing what's happening at the hip. It's really easy to think about working in isolated terms. Um, you know, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna try and open up the hip here, um, or I'm just gonna try and stretch my quads. But if we're not sort of seeing the relationship between parts and how one end is impacting the other, then we might not be making the progress that we think we are. So I want you to just drop your drop your ankle, drop your foot toward the floor only as far as you can go without your thigh moving, and then hang out there. Because ideally over time, you're gonna get, you're gonna be able to take a step, you're gonna be able to have a bit of bend in your free leg, and it's not gonna force your pelvis to twist, you know, or to tuck under, or to tilt forward, or you know, however the compensation shows up in your body. This angle, this joint has to get smaller if you have that much tension in this quadricep such that when you bend your knee, it impacts what's happening at your hip. So once you switch sides. So again, extending, and then just, I'm gonna, I need to anchor a little bit more. So really pulling in, and then just letting that lower leg drop only so that the thigh doesn't, doesn't pop up any. So on this side, it feels a lot uh, there's a little bit more tension. And I don't want you to be sort of like, oh, I can stabilize here. Like I can, I can keep my thigh and you're using like incredible force. Like my back's all tense. My everything's tense actually. Um, but you know, like my thigh barely moved and I can get my ankle to the floor. I just want you to let it, let it hang. You're using effort to keep your, your legs straight and then just allow a little bit of bend in that knee. Yeah. All right, so that is something for you to play around with, you know, and, and also to be mindful of how are your 
how is what's happening in one joint, knee bend, impacting what's happening in another joint, hip flexion, and how can you better unwind those sticky parts so that you start to use the backs of your legs, your hamstrings, and your glutes so that you have good um, spinal stability, so that you get super duper pelvic floor health because of the action of the glutes and the way they attach, attach to the sacrum, um, all that good stuff. So, all right, keep unwinding yourself. I'm gonna keep doing it.